answers his accusation. And the Lord saith unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of God, or from the presence of the Lord. So you see here, who did all those things? It was Satan. He gave, God gave Satan permission to do those things because of an accusation to prove that Job was good, not just because of the things he had or the blessings that he received, but that Job was good. Right? So, Satan, you know, I've, I've heard people call Satan the angel of death. Have you, anybody ever heard that? This is an interesting uh, tattoo that someone, I, I found it on the internet. And I want you to notice, they call him the Grim Reaper a lot of times, if you've ever heard of him, I'm sure you have. Uh, I want you to notice that he has a timepiece. Remember we talked about, well, his time's up. Yeah, you know, time is involved in this false concept of uh, you know the Grim Reaper and all that stuff, but it's definitely Satan that has something to do with it. And I'm going to show you some verses that that prove it. Uh, Jesus went into the synagogue on Sabbath, and there was a woman. She was an old woman, and she was bent over. She couldn't straighten herself up. She was so bent with age, and. <clears throat> And Jesus heals her and the Pharisees get mad because He healed her on Sabbath. But listen to what He says. And in this tells us the clues to where sickness comes from. You know, if you've ever thought that, why, why God did you give me this uh, hay fever, right? Uh, well, here's the reason why we get sick. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed, from this bond on the Sabbath day. That's Luke 13, 16. So you notice, who did he say bound her in this sickness? Satan. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, God. It was Satan. You know, I'm reminded of a text. Uh, I think it's in Romans, but my mind is pretty foggy. But it says that sin is what causes death. Not God. You're, I meant to include that scripture, and now that I think of it, uh, I didn't do it. But, but anyway, so sin and Satan, they're the ones, that's what's all bound up in uh, causing death. So it isn't God. And here's another scripture. Uh, Jesus is talking to the scribes and Pharisees and He's rebuking them. And listen to what He says. You are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do. What did they end up doing? What was the lust of their father that they ended up doing? Murdering Jesus. They, they, they sent Him to the cross even though He was innocent. So the lust of their father you will do. He was a murderer from how long? The beginning. Way back. And abode not in the truth because there is... Now, I want you to know something. Abode not in the truth. Did you know that thou shalt not kill is the truth? That's one of the commandments, and the Psalms tell us that the commandments are, are truth, right? They're truth. So that is one of the one of the commandments that he does not abode in. The truth that he does not abode in, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So Satan is not only the person who brings sickness in, in a sense through bringing uh, sin into the world. But he's also a murderer. He murders people who don't deserve to die of sin. And we, Jesus being the chief example, well, the only example on our planet. <laughs> why would God, now this is a question, if God brings death, why would God warn Adam about death? You know, he warned him. He said, what, what did he say? Well, let's look at it. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So he warned man about death. Now if God's bringing death, there's no reason for him to warn people about death, Right? You know, some people actually believe that death is just a natural part of life. You know, circle of life kind of thing. But that's not, that's not what we see here, is it? God created and 
He warned about death. Death didn't have to be around. So what are the acts of God? Huh? Oh, there's one more scripture, and I totally forgot to put this in here. It's in Revelations. Who is the final enemy to be destroyed? Death. What is he called? An enemy. Now, if God's calling him enemy, could he be doing his work? No. Right there. In that. Man, I wish I'd have remembered to put that in here. Well, at least I remembered it, right? But yeah, God calls, in, in the book of Revelation, uh, God calls death an enemy that will be destroyed. So obviously, it's not God's job. Not that God can't do it, because remember, God it, it can do anything. But, but He doesn't want to. That's not something that He desires. Because remember the verse we read at the very beginning. His thoughts towards us are good, right? Peaceful. Right, the strange act of God where He destroys the wicked. Yeah, it's, it's strange to Him to do that. But um, it's kind of like, a, I've considered, I've said it this way many times, but it's kind of like a doctor when he's dealing with cancer. You know, a person goes into the doctor, they don't feel good. They check them out, oh, you got cancer. Well, what is cancer? Cancer is your own cells breaking the rules. Okay? Your cells are supposed to sit in a certain place and take up a certain amount of food and only grow a certain amount. But cancer takes all the food it can get, it grows to a point that it squeezes out everything else. So it's like, it's like your cells in full rebellion, right? And so when the doctor, when you come to the doctor with this, imagine the earth as a, as a patient, okay? And the patient comes to the doctor, imagine God is the doctor. And, the, and it says, I don't feel good. And he checks it out and it's, oh, you got cancer. So what is his only recourse? Now you could, you could say he could try to get the cells to act right. And maybe there is a way to do that. We haven't figured that out yet. But there might be. But if he can't do that, what's he end up doing? Cutting out the cells that have rebelled. Right? It's a strange act for a doctor to cut on somebody because what's their oath? You know their oath, don't you? Yeah, do no harm. They, they, uh, it's a Hippocratic oath, right? Did I say it right? I was, I, I was afraid I was going to say hippo something else and you know be wrong. But anyway, yeah, Hippocratic oath. So they're not supposed to do any harm. So it's kind of a strange act for a doctor to cut out cancer. But he will do what it takes to save the patient. Right? And so, yes, it, you're right. God has a strange act where He destroys the wicked. And that is to save what He can save. But we're talking about death in general. It's not God's job. It's not something He wants. It's not something He ever wanted. Right? So, what are the acts of God? Well, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. So one of God's acts is creation. Amen. Look around at whatever's around you and the people around you. That's God's acts. Some pretty people too. Yeah. Right? Most of them. <laughs> so that's God's act. Not death, but creation. That's awesome. Right? It's easy, it's easy for some numbskull to go grab a book and throw it in a fire and destroy it. But let's see that same bonehead write a book. Okay? Or paint a painting. The act of creation takes a whole lot more of your time and effort, doesn't it? You know? Uh, but, but to destroy, that's nothing. It's, it's too easy, really. <laughs> I mean, you know, we live in a fragile world. So one of God's act is creation. What is the other act? Well, part of creation is the creation of man, right? And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Think about it. Before God created anything, there was no life. Dirt. It's just dirt, right? But he made it alive. Now that's... You, I'd like to see an artist do that around here. Yeah, you ain't going to do it. So that's one of his art. One of his acts is creating life, including man, which is amazing. Not creating death, but creating life. Okay? And this is the greatest work of all, the greatest act that God ever did. For God so loved the world. Who did He love? The world. He loved the whole world, right? Okay? 
He loved the world that He gave. So we, we see Him creating and making life, and now we see Him giving. Right? Not taking, but giving. That He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believe in Him should not what? Perish. What does perish mean? Death. Right? So, because He gave His Son so that they would not perish. We would not perish because of His gift of Christ. But have what? Everlasting life. Everlasting life. In other words, we don't have it. But if we believe, we'll be given it. Amen. That's an awesome thing too. But I want you to notice, you notice that I didn't show a picture of the cross here? Because the act of giving Christ to us started in the manger. Actually, before the manger. It started when Mary sang her song. Remember? We studied about that in Sabbath school. So the act of giving Christ to us started at the very start, the very first of His uh, earthly ministry. Right? He gave Christ to us. So there's the first time that Mary's unwrapping Him, sort of. You see that? Kind of unwrapping Him. Like a Christmas present. Well, that's a bad example. But anyway. But that's not the only act that's involved in God giving us Christ. Because Christ taught. We just talked about the woman at the well, didn't we? Isn't it weird? I, I did this before, you know, I, and honestly, I didn't get a chance to look at the Sabbath lesson. So I didn't know this, okay? But what did they do? They, he gave Christ to teach us. You know, He talked to the woman at the well. He talked to the people in Israel. He, he taught everyone that He came in contact with. He taught them. And here He's teaching the woman at the well. So that's part of God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. There's part of the gift. But there's more. Of course, there's the gift of His life on the cross. You know, the, and I would say this is part of His strange act in a sense because He put all of the punishment we deserve on Christ. And that wasn't just regular death, right? We all understand that. This was the eternal death. He got, he, he got something that now we won't get even though we deserve it, especially me. But through Christ, we avoid that. So that's part of that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. This is act, the acts of God. You know, well, I'll tell you that in a second. Not only did He give us His death, but He gave us His rebirth, His, His resurrection. And now because God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to be resurrected, now we get to take part in that resurrection. Right? You, can you believe people are mad at God about death? It's called putting the blame somewhere else. That's right. Satan putting the blame somewhere else. And then the final, not the final probably, there'll be thousands, millions of more acts of giving. But the, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son because He will return and take us with Him. Man, that's, that's going to be awesome. And that's part of the acts of God. Um, so these are the acts of God. I was in the store yesterday with my wife. And we went into, we we're in the mall and we went into one particular store. And I was like, oh gosh, get me out of here. They had loud music and, and, and the t-shirts on the walls. And I got to looking at the t-shirts and one of the t-shirts said bad religion on it. Bad religion. And it had a cross with a, uh, what do you call that, with the marked out sign, like the no smoking signs? Yeah, like the cancel sign, the red thing, across the cross. And it said, bad religion. What? Why? Again, why am I in here? You know, that's what I'm thinking. And then I got to looking at some of the other shirts, and you had the devil, and you had, uh, you know, death. The angel of death, of course, was up there. And all kinds of terrible shirts. Like they liked it. Like the guy with the tattoo. Like he liked death. But yet, they crossed out the cross and said it was bad religion. And I brought the guy over and I said, what is this about? Okay, you're showing me all these devil shirts and all this death and destruction. And, uh, you know, anybody ever heard of Iron Maiden? They got this guy named Eddie. He's, he's like a half dead guy, zombie thing. I don't know why they have him. But he's on his shirt. I'm going, you, you got all this stuff, and it's like it's good. And then over here, you got a cross, crossed out, saying bad religion. What is that about? And he proceeded to, oh, well, that's a band. It's the name of the band. And blah, 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 blah. But it said something to me. 
It said that you can be so blind to who God really is that you think all that stuff's great. Do you realize that people are worshiping death? I mean, that's literally what they're doing. They're worshiping death. That's why we have young people that are cutting themselves. We have young people that put belts around their necks until they start to pass out, and then hopefully they have a friend to let it loose, or they die, because they don't see the real acts of God. Because you got numbskull, some Christians, saying, well, you know, his number is up. And then you wonder why they're mad at God. It drives me nuts. That's why I wanted to give this message. I, want, I wanted to hold up God and say, look, He's awesome. He created, and then He redeemed. And why did He do that? For God so loved the world. If that's bad religion, I want it. Anybody want to say amen to that? Amen. That's, a, that's a good bad religion. Come on. Oh. Anyway, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for those people who are so blinded to the truth that they don't see in the cross the love of God where He, where he allowed Himself to be nailed and poured out the last bit of His life. And why did He do it? Because He loved us. Lord, I pray that you can open their eyes. That if I come in contact with someone, that you open my mouth and help me to show this truth to them. And that you will help each person in this church to do the very same. Thank you, Lord, so much for that sacrifice. For creating me and loving me to the point of losing your own life. Thank you, Lord, so much for all these things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.